to unlock Red Death in Vampire Survivors, you have to kill the Reaper that spawns at 13 minutes. To do this method, you need to have finished the Moongolo progression and unlock the yellow sign. If you haven't done that already, just search for full Moongolo update progression guide and it will lead you to a video of mine that shows you exactly what you have to do. There are a ton of ways how you can do that, but I'll just use a non-secret character so more people can do it. The library is the stage that I will play on and here are the settings that I'm using, but if you don't have inverse mode then simply don't use it. When you enter the stage, Gallo gets a level up and we'll use out of bounds, so our clock lancer deals damage to the enemies and we are looking for laurel as well as center water. For now we are just walking around, there's no big issue with the enemies in the beginning since they are incredibly weak. And the last weapon that we are looking for is Santa Water. Labora is probably the strongest weapon in the game that you can use and you pretty much have nothing to do anymore. I will pick Duplicator here to make Santa Water stronger and we will use the Merchant to pick a card and we'll get the Silent Old Sanctuary. Next up to evolve the Clock Lancet and the Laurel, we'll need both of the rings and both of the arrows, so I will head to the left side, then I can also pick up the Empty Tome. I will pick up the Empty Tome right away, instead of waiting for 6 items first, since you can pick up stage items as additional items, meaning I could pick up the Empty Tome and the Mask as a 7th and 8th item, but we don't need that here. I recommend that in the beginning you first kill the enemies that you can level up and get ahead of the curve. Putting center water to level 8 will be very useful to deal with the enemies, but also upgrading the clock lancet is important that you can kill the enemies more easily. I will pick up the attract orb since it's needed to evolve center water, but keep in mind that you will have to wait until 10 minutes to get your first evolution. And these are the level ups that you are mainly looking for, the ones that reduce the cooldown and make the clock lancet go around faster. If you find Brazer while leveling up then I recommend picking it since it will make Labora bigger and that will just help you cover yourself so enemies won't be able to kill you, at least until you become invulnerable. By the way, even if you die don't worry about it, there's no issue with that, I'll pick Toruna as the last option here. All you have to achieve is to upgrade the Glock Lancet and the Laurel and the Reaper will die. As you can see I already have 6 items, so I can pick up the Empty Tome as 7th item. There was not a plan, but since we limited our weapons to only 3, it's a lot easier to find all the items and I even found them before I got to the Empty Tome. And here we are, there's the Empty Tome, very nice. The goal is to max this out ASAP since it makes a huge difference on Gallo once you have it maxed out. Gallo starts with an additional 15% cooldown reduction, so combining this with the Empty Tome and the Silent Old Sanctuary, you get ridiculous cooldown values. Minute 9 is a huge farm wave and I recommend just standing still so you get a ton of kills here. You just want to level up a bunch that you can max out most of the things that you have. And the moment I hit minute 10, I'll be looking for Red Gem that accumulated all the experience. If the video helps you out then please consider subscribing and giving it a like. I plan to redo all the major guides for the final release of of Vampire Survivors and my channel has more than 300 videos on this game. Uh, there we go. This also means I can evolve here so I want to max out center water. Center water is level 7 and there we have center water level 8. Beautiful. All I have to do now is kill this boss and then I can evolve it and we are free to go. Empty tome level 5 means that we have now the lowest cooldown that we'll achieve. If you check it out it's negative 84%, this is even close to becoming invincible since the cooldown gets so low that your shield on the laurel and later the shroud recharges faster than it gets lost. So yes, if you wanted to you could even remove the center water and just become immortal but I don't fully recommend it since it's a little bit harder and it's really not needed. You won't die once you have this all maxed out. Now for Toruna you can either take the 100% bonus curse and get more limit break level ups but I will just banish it since the guardians can be very annoying to deal with. We just hit minute 11 and the arcana bat spawned. I will use the arcana mad groove that pulls in all the stage items. And there we go, there it is. I can just trigger all of the guardians at the same time. Let me just quickly run them always, there we go. Stone mask, sure why not. Here we have the metallio right. Then we have the metallio left. Then we have the silver ring and finally we have the gold ring. I won't pick up the chest since you have to max out the items first to evolve the weapons, meaning they all have to be level 9 and that will take quite some time. 
As you can see, the Guardians are not an issue to deal with because you have so much Labora on the floor that they get stuck inside of it. When enemies take damage in this game, slight knockback is always applied to them and that hinders them from walking. As you can see, the moment Labora disappears, they start walking a little bit faster, but once it drops down again and hits them, then they slow down yet again. You can always also use NFTs that you find to kill the Guardians. The NFT deals a ridiculous amount of damage. Combine that with a freeze to guarantee that you hit them for the entire duration. And 2 to 3 NFTs should already do it. Just as a note, you obviously didn't have to pick the stone mask. I just like doing it because money. And uh, the first Guardian already died, very nice. Then the rest should follow very soon after, there we go. And the final one just died. To be honest, at this point, you can also just stand still the entire time, since the enemies will just die to Labora and Mad Groove will give you all the experience. The Silver Ring is already maxed out and here's the final level for the Gold Ring. Now we can use the chest to evolve the Clock Lancet. And there we go. We have the Infinite Corridor which halves the enemy's HP every single time it goes off. Don't get confused when you don't see the Clock Lancet attack anymore. This is a well-known bug in the game that just randomly happens, don't ask me why. You can still see the ice explosions, how it goes around, so that one is not lost. And there we go, the Metallio Ride is also maxed out, that means we can now get Shroud. Shroud limits the damage that you can take to 10, minus your armor. So yes, you could even take this down to 1, but not below it. However, the reason why we take it is, when enemies hit the shield, there is an explosion that goes off the retaliation of it. And the Reaper takes special damage from it, which just makes it a little bit faster to kill him. You don't need to do this to win, but it just makes it a little bit faster. And well, another side effect is that you can't die anymore, pretty much. So I will just stand still here for the rest of the game. Maybe I show short snippets if there's anything coming in that may be troublesome, but I don't think so. So we will see each other probably at 25 minutes, that boss is a little bit harder, and then at 30 minutes. So I just want to point out one more time that you really don't need to have Labora or Center Water. It just makes it a lot easier to get through the game, since the Clock Lancer takes quite some time to become strong, which is the point where you have Empty Tome maxed out, and Laurel will be entirely useless until you have it evolved to Shroud. That also means you can replace it with whatever other weapon you want to have to farm early on, like for example Garlic or Song of Mana, but Labora is just amazing at killing the Guardians, so that is my choice of weapon. At 25 minutes the strongest stage boss is about to spawn, this is the hag that doesn't take knockback and we can take a look at what she will be doing, I assume she will actually get towards us and maybe hit me, oh no never mind, the labora stacking is just crazy so yes here you can see she doesn't take knockback, she doesn't get knocked away but the constant attacking interrupts her movement and that way she didn't even get to me. It wouldn't have been a problem if she touched me since we have Crimson Shroud and Corridor is constantly halving her HP, but that just shows the power of Labor that not even the boss gets to us. We are about to enter 29 minutes, this is the final wave and the strongest that you can expect in this game, and as you can see, well, none of them are really getting through. Like even those that get pushed forward, they are just frozen and can't hurt us, but Labora has way more than enough damage to deal with them. Since we are playing on hurry mode, this only takes 30 seconds, and then we are about to face the Reaper. I have turned on the damage numbers that you can see when the HP gets halved, since it will show a very big number, and it's about to happen. There we go, 30 minutes, and there's the Reaper. You may have seen the ginormous numbers whenever the corridor goes off. Do you see the super long number? It gets shorter and shorter and shorter the more often it goes off, since it halves the HP. And there we go, that was like 5 million, I think. 2 million, and 1 million. Then we have... I, do, I didn't even see that. <laughs> There's 350k, 180k... 20k, we can actually just walk towards him because he will just die to the Labora now. There's even a second Reaper, but wait, they just died. And that was it. Since you kill the Reaper with either Corridor or Shroud, you just have to apply the damage once. The White Hand scene will be triggered and you also get the 5 Golden Eggs. Otherwise, it would just continue spawning Reapers forever. But killing the Reaper in any way will unlock Red Death for you. You don't have to do it with these weapons. It's just the easiest way of doing it. And that is the final stat screen. Don't forget to subscribe and give the video a like. Enjoy your time with Red Death.